the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty. singing with us this morning. You can be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Hey, before we get started today, I have a special somebody that that we need to recognize this morning uh, because of some accomplishments that she has uh, endured over the last several years. Emily, will you please come up here? Uh, Miss Emily, I, I asked her to do a 15-minute speech this morning. Uh, she said no. Uh, no. But I told her I'd make this uh, as simple and as easy for her as I can. Uh, but she's graduating this year. Uh, this coming Friday, you'll actually officially be graduated. Uh, she's graduating from Northmore High School. Uh, her plans for right now is she's not sure. <laughs> and I said, you know what, that's okay. It is fun. I, I've always told my boys, especially my oldest, uh, that, that you don't have to have the whole world figured out right now. Not yet. Uh, uh, it comes in time. So with that, uh, I do have a gift for her today. This is, this is a, uh, a Bible that she helped me pick out. She told me kind of what she wanted. She didn't want pink or anything like that. Uh, so uh, I took Heather with me, and uh, we picked it out for her. This is not a, uh, a gift Bible uh, that... There's nothing wrong with gift Bibles, but I don't believe in just giving somebody a gift Bible because what happens to a gift Bible? It goes up on the shelf somewhere. This is not a gift Bible. This is your personal Bible. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful study Bible, and uh, I hope you get a lot of life out of it. Uh, uh, but uh, would you do me a favor this morning, and let's uh, pray uh, for Miss Emily as she transfers from one part of her life into a new part of her life. Uh, even though she don't know where that life is quite taken her yet, uh, God already does know. Uh, so let's pray for that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for today. Father, we thank you for uh, Miss Emily. Uh, we thank you for allowing her to be a part of our family here, dear Lord. Father, and I, I, I find it a privilege, dear Lord, that you put her into my life uh, in the youth, dear Lord. Father, we just thank you for her. We thank you for... Uh, for, for every step that she has taken up to this point, Father. But as we enter a new stage of her life, I ask that you just lead and guide her. Father, I ask that you lead and guide her wherever that might go. Uh, and, Father, help her to know that you are right there, that you're right there guiding her. Father, help her to see that. Help her to know that as she enters a new part of her life. And again, Father, we thank you for everything, and we thank you for her. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Congratulations. You might not realize it, but I'm actually, or, or I used to not be a talker. I would, me standing up here in front of you, if, if uh, Heather, if they would have said that 30 years or 20 years ago when we, uh, for over 20 years ago when we first got married, if I was going to be up here uh, preaching a sermon, she would say, you're crazy uh, because I was not a talker. I, I, I wasn't that guy at all. Uh, and, and some of y'all have heard the stories that when me and Heather first started dating, she didn't think that I liked her at all because I just wouldn't talk. I, I never said anything until... Uh, several dates into it before I finally opened up and we started talking about things. But you would have never guessed uh, uh, that I just was not a talker. Uh, uh, now Heather would say that I could probably carry on a conversation with a wall if it allowed me to. Uh, 
Uh, I love talking to people. I, my job opens that door up for me so much that, that I'm able to just talk to people. And, and even the, the ladies in the office, they know certain customers, uh, when I go to their house, they go ahead and block me out a little bit more time because they know that I'm going to sit there and talk with them. I, I talk uh, during that. I talk when we go to a ball game or something. Other, I'll talk to anybody. Uh, as a family, we went out to uh, uh, a Carolina Covers game a few weeks back, and me and Heather and Ben were just walking the concourse. Uh, and of course, I could do a football game. So what do I have on? I have my Dallas Cowboys hat on. <laughs> well, here comes a guy, and he's wanting to carry on a conversation uh, about the Cowboys from 10, 15 years ago. And he was like, he knew the dates, the the time, how much time was on. I mean. He, and so we just carried on a conversation. I just, I do that. I even get, get to the point now that, that the, some of the shirts or the hats that I wear, like my Dallas Cowboy hat, I know I'm going to have a conversation with somebody. Either they love them or they hate them. Most of the time they hate them, uh, and I get that. But a lot of times at work, I wear my Appalachian hat, uh, and, and that's a great conversation starter. Or some of the shirts that I wear. Uh, now, I don't wear uh, as much as the, the Christian T-shirt. Uh, uh, that kind of conversation starter. Typically, I'll wear a Star Wars shirt or something. That has been one of the biggest conversation starters that I've ever had. Uh, but, but that happens whether it's at work, at ball games. If I go into the schools, I can just carry on a conversation uh, with anybody. My favorite place to, hold a, uh, to have a conversation with somebody, and it drives Heather crazy sometimes in the middle of Walmart. Oh, I, I, I don't mind it at all. We'll have a conversation right here in the middle of Walmart. Uh, that, but that's where we're going today. If you haven't noticed today, we're going to talk about talking a little bit, but, but with a little bit of a different twist. Uh, but, but we're going to see, uh, we're going to talk about that talking. And, and even, well, let me mention this. Do you realize how much, on average, somebody spends a day talking? Have you ever thought about that? On average, three hours. You spend three hours a day talking. Now, ladies, y'all might be a little bit higher. Guys, you might be a little bit lower. Uh, or vice versa. Uh, if you're like me, I probably talk a little bit more. Than, no, I take that back. She's a teacher. She talks a lot more than me, a uh, whole lot more than me. Uh, uh, but, but on average, three hours a day. So here's, here's my question because, because we're talking about talking. So here, here's the question that today's sermon is going to revolve around. How much of that three hours, say if you were average and you talk three hours a day, how much of that average is you praying? Think about that. How, how much of my time during the day revolves around me praying, me talking to God, me talking to Jesus? How much time do you, would you guess? I'm glad you asked because I looked it up. On average, now this, this, this was done in 2020, the survey that I saw. So in 2020, so it wasn't that long ago, 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day in prayer. Is that high or is that low? Now don't answer, that's a rhetorical question. Uh, is that high or low? And so, so let's take that 10 minutes though. Say, say you did spend 10 minutes in prayer. What is that 10 minutes full of? Now, I looked that up as well. Uh, most of the time, most of the time, when it's, when it's on that, that scale, you're saying the same words and even the same list day after day after day. What that, what that translates into is you're praying before meals, and when you're praying before meals, do you say the same prayer each and every time? Probably. We do at our house. Uh, uh, ben is normally the one that, that leads us in prayer before we eat. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's about the same every day. It might change up a little bit. Uh, so in that 10 minutes that we use, we're using the same words, the same list most of the time. Uh, but why so little? Why, why so? Now, this is the national average. Here in the United States of Christians, on average, spend 10 minutes a day in prayer. Why so little? Why so little? Well, there's another research. I was all full of researches this week. I was, I was in all kinds of things. Uh, some of the top reasons. Now, some of these top reasons are going to be very churchy. So, so if you're not used to, to hearing some of the churchy words, hang on to the, uh, till, uh, the end of the list, and, and, and I'll, and I'll kind of uh, give you a, 
a different approach to it. But some of the first ones that they talked about is that, you know what, sometimes we just don't believe. So, so what does that mean? So when we pray or when we don't pray, we don't pray because we don't really believe that God can or will do something. So why pray? If, if I don't believe it, I, I'm just not going to pray. And so that's one of the top reasons. The other one is, is our flesh is weak. Like I said, some of these are going to sound really churchy, uh, but our flesh is weak. It's, it's, Paul talks about that in so many different times in some of the Pauline letters that, 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 that our flesh is weak. We, we just, uh, we, we can't, we don't do it. Uh, another one is, uh, it kind of ties in with that one a little bit. It's spiritual discipline. We're not disciplining ourselves enough uh, to pray. Okay, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting this list a little bit. I, I can relate a little bit. Uh, so moving on from there, uh, it says uh, the next one is, is that we have left our first love. That, that, that time when we first, when, when we were a brand new Christian and, and prayer just seemed like it was so much easier then because we were brand new. We were, we were so in love with God and, 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 and the church and, and, and we prayed all the time. And as we moved past that, we've moved away from our first love. So, so we're, not, we're not having that conversation. If I, I get that to a point as well. And, and then they say, here's a big one. We don't want God to interfere with our lives. I'm not going to pray because I don't want him to interfere with my life. I don't want him uh, to, to disturb uh, what I'm doing. And I get that. I get that to a point. Uh, the next one is, is, well, there's sin in my life. There's, there, there's things in my life. My, my life is a mess right now. And so I kind of stopped talking to God. I kind of distance myself from God because of the sin that's in my life, the times that I've messed up. I get that to a point. I understand that. The next one, this is where we leave kind of the, uh, the, 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 the church talk and we go into some, some real life applications now. We're lazy. Guilty sometimes. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. We get lazy sometimes, and that's where that 10 minutes goes sometimes. We just, we just get lazy sometimes. And, 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 and then the next one they mention, it, it moves from the lazy point to it's a priority issue. I actually get that. Uh, I got other important things that I need to do. I, I can't, I, I just don't have time. To, I'm not lazy. I got a hundred different things that I'm trying to do. I just can't fit that in right now. So it's a priority issue. That, that list, I, I, I get the list. I, I do. I understand it. I, you know what? I'm guilty of about everyone on that list. But the next one is the one that hit me upside the head. We get discouraged. We get discouraged, uh, and, 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 and when we get discouraged, uh, what's some of the things that happens to us? Think about it. We get discouraged. We get discouraged with our jobs. We get discouraged with our family sometimes. We get discouraged with just life in general. We get discouraged with God. And so what happens? What happens when we get that... Uh, that discouragement finds its way into our lives and, and, and we're just walking through life. We're going through the motions. And, and, and so what happens with that, that communication that we have between us and God? What happens then? You know, sometimes we, we clam up. That's some of us. Some of us will clam up and, 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 and go into uh, that defensive mode. And we're just not talking. Sometimes we just shut down. Sure. But some of us, me included, when I get discouraged, I get busy. I get busy. And then it's a priority thing. It goes back to being a priority thing because I'm busy. I don't have time. But that's, that comes from discouragement. It, it, comes from, it, it comes from me being discouraged. And when I get discouraged, I'm not going to God. I'm not talking to God. I'm not having that, uh, that, that prayer time in my life. What if this morning, as we go through this, what if I challenged your thoughts on prayer today? And, and, and not just me. Take, take me out of the picture. Not that I'm going to challenge your thoughts on prayer, but what if Jesus actually stood right up in front of us? 
Think about this. What if Jesus stood right here and he said, let's talk. Today's title on the message today, let's talk. It's Jesus standing in front of us and he's saying, hey, let's talk. Let's talk. Would our thought process change from, from, from just a, uh, a checklist thing? I need to get my 10 minutes in today so I can go on with the rest of my life. If, 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 if we can move from that and actually look at, you know what? God wants, he wants to have a conversation with us. Man, it's not prayer anymore. It's, it's not prayer. It's not that checklist thing that I have to get done. It's not those, those, those certain words that I have to say. It's not even that list uh, of, of prayer requests that I have. It, it, all that goes away because it's a conversation. It's me talking to Jesus. It's, it's me talking to God. Just like how, how in the mornings when we get here and, and we want to talk before Sunday school, just have that conversation. How are things going? Uh, everything been going all right? We're having that conversation back and forth. That's what Jesus wants to have with us. And we're going to see that played out today. Our scripture is going to revolve just about throughout all of uh, John chapter 21. If you'll go ahead and turn there, I'm not going to give you a specific passage uh, because we're going to skip around a, lot, a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but we're going to be in John chapter 21, and we're going to look at a, a time in Peter's life, a time in Peter's life where we're going to see that he messed up. He messed up. And so what happens when he messes up? He gets discouraged. So what happens when he gets discouraged? He really doesn't have direction in his life. And when he doesn't have direction in his life, what does he do? He tries to distance himself from Jesus. And so we're going to see that played out in, the, in chapter 21 as we move through it. We're going to actually uh, we're going to go through it in two different ways. The first one in John 21 verses 1 through 14. And we're not going to read them all. We're going to jump through them. But in that we're going to actually see what's going on. We're going to kind of set up the setting a little bit. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to get some of the content uh, out of that. And then when we get into verses 15 through 17. That's really going to be our main focus in our scripture. That's really going to be the meat uh, of the scripture today because really that's the talk. That, that's the talk in the title today, Let's Talk. Uh, but before we get in, into the chapter 21, we got to kind of know what's going on. And most of us realize what has happened before 21, but, but just in case you don't know, uh, right before chapter 21, we see that, that, that Jesus is going to the cross. And not just he, that he is going to the cross, but he's already been on the cross. He's already passed. But before that, he's sitting there, and Peter denies him three times. Now, that plays a little bit of a role today, uh, so pay attention to that. He's, he's denied Jesus three times, and Jesus told him, Peter, you're going to do this. And Peter's like, no, nah, ain't no way. I, am, there is no, I would die. I'm, I'm dying with you, Jesus. I would not deny you. Three times, yeah, you will, uh, Peter. And not only will you deny me, you're going to run. You're going to flat out run is what Jesus tells them. And, and so we have to realize that. And then, and then at that point, uh, we know that Jesus has passed away. And that's the last point that Peter knows anything as we head into chapter 21. Because as we get into chapter 21, uh, in the very first part, in verse 3, uh, we're going to see what he does. He's already, now, remember, he's already denied Jesus. He's already ran. He, he's hiding. And so where do we find Peter? Well, we see him in the, in the first part of 21, and uh, it's going down to uh, verse 3. It says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but, the, but that night... They caught nothing. So what did he do? He was discouraged. Yeah, we get that. He messed up, first of all. First of all, he messed up. Then he got discouraged. And not only is he discouraged, uh, but he's, he's walking around with really no direction. And he's trying to distance himself. Remember, I mentioned that several times already. He's distanced himself. So what did he do? He went fishing. 
Now, when he says, I'm going fishing, this is not a hobby for him. When he says, I'm going fishing, what that is is, is busy work. That's, that's, his, that's him going back to his job, back to what he's comfortable with, back to what he knows, because he's without direction right now. So what do we do when, we're not, when we don't have direction in our lives? What are we going to do? What we're used to doing, what we're comfortable doing, what we're comfortable at, that's where we're going to go. And that's what Peter does here. So, so when you see he went fishing, know that that's important. That's, that's really important to the scripture that we're reading this morning, that he went back to where he's comfortable. He went back to what his safety zone is. And then I like this part. Jesus enters in, in, in verses, uh, verses 5 and 6, uh, it, it says, He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? Haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And in, in, in verse 6, he says, uh, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because it was such a large number of fish. Have you ever had Jesus do that? He called out to you and you knew it was him. He calls out to you when, you're, when you've been to that point that, that you're so discouraged. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where to go. And Jesus calls out to you. See, I, I, I think this is, this, is, this, is, this is Jesus calling out to them. And not just to them, not just to Peter. He's yelling, he's calling out to Peter. But not just to Peter, but also us. Also us. And, and, and the, the part that I find here in that, in that verse in 5 and 6, this isn't the first time that Jesus has done this to Peter about the whole fishing. Now, now think about this. This is, this is Peter's job. This is what he's comfortable doing. He, he knows all about fishing. He doesn't catch anything. And then Jesus is standing on the shore. Hey, cast your net to the other side. He's telling him what to do. A carpenter. Really, Jesus? Yeah, throw it to the other side. And that's what he does. But have we ever been in that position? Have we ever been there where Jesus is calling out to you? When you've messed up, when you're discouraged, when, when you have no direction, when you're trying to distance yourself from God, he's still trying to call out to you. Can you hear him? Then we jump down to verses 9 and 10. In verses 9 and 10, it says, When they landed, they saw a fire burning. I saw a, they saw a fire of burning coals, and there were fish on it and some bread. Then Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Now think about that for a moment. Think about that. Uh, what did they see? They saw the, the hot coals. They, they saw the hot coals. They, they saw the fish. They saw the bread. The food was ready. It was ready. He already had the food waiting on him. But he still told Peter, you know what? Bring me some fish. So what is that telling us? That's very important here. That that's, that's telling us that he didn't need it. He didn't need the fish. It was already cooked. It was ready. But yet he still wants us to bring it to him. He still wanted Peter to bring the fish to him. He doesn't need it, but he wants us to bring it. What he's saying here, he doesn't need us. He wants us. You understand what he's saying here. You understand the, the, the thought pattern that Jesus is going through here that he's trying to talk to Peter and, and he's saying, you, Peter, I, I don't need your fish, but I want you. He doesn't need to talk to us. He wants to talk to us. See, that takes prayer. That, that changes everything about prayer. And that says that he wants to talk. He wants to have a conversation with us. And then verse 12, verse 12, it says, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. 
Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Has God ever talked to you in that way? That, that you know without a shadow that he's told me, you know what you need to do. You know that it was God. And you're like, really, God? Have you been there? Heather had that experience yesterday. She, uh, God directly told her, you need, not audibly, of course, it would have scared her to death, I'd have taken her to the hospital. But she knew that she was supposed to invite somebody out to lunch. Are you serious, God? Really? Am I really the right person? And God's like, yeah. Well, that's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus said to them, hey, guys, come and have breakfast. Let's sit down. Let's have that conversation. Let's talk. Let's talk about things. Let's, let's, let's move through our lives. Let's, let's, let's talk about where we are right now. Let's talk about some of the things that we're doing right now. Let's talk about uh, all the stuff that's going on in your life. Have you been there? Have you been so, uh, have you messed up so bad? And you're like, mm, I've, I, 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 I just can't. I, I, I can't talk to God right now. I, I've, I've messed up to the point that I just can't. He, he, he doesn't want to hear from me right now. Have you been there? Have you been so discouraged with life? Have you been so discouraged what's going on around you that, that, that the last thing on your mind is, I need to talk to God. Have you been there? Have you been there? Have you been to the point that uh, you, just, you, you, you just have no direction? I, I don't even know what step to take next. I don't know where to go from here. Have you messed up so bad? Have you been discouraged so bad that, that now you don't have that direction? You don't know where to go from here. So what do we do? We try to distance ourselves from God. That's where we find Peter. That's where we find Peter as we move into the next part of our verses. I told you earlier that this is going to be the talk. Let's, the, the title, Let's Talk, this is where it starts. And it starts in, in verse 15. And, and let's read just that one first. Uh, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Son, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love, that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Let's back up just a moment, though. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John. He didn't call him Peter. He used his full name. Now, if y'all ever hear me in church and you hear a ruckus in the back and all of a sudden you hear Blake, Blake Allen Marsh or Benjamin Donald Marsh, you know something's getting ready to go down, right? Yeah, they, they in trouble. They, they know it. Everybody else knows it. Can you see Jesus doing the same thing to John, uh, uh, Peter right here? Can you see Jesus doing the same thing? Simon, son of John. His full name. And then he asked, do you truly love me more than these? That word, these. Do you truly love me more than these? Now, there is all kinds of theories on what these are. I, I read, I, I, I can't tell you how many commentaries, how many illustrations that I, that I read about what he was talking about, these most people, the most of the thought patterns is, is when Jesus says, do you love me more than these? He's, uh, Jesus is talking about the other disciples that are around him. And I can understand that a little bit, but I don't think that's actually what he's talking about here. When, when I hear, when I see Jesus say the word these, do you love me more than these? I think it's the fish. Why? Why would I think that the fish is his comfort zone? The fish, what, what was he doing before Jesus got there and yelled out to him, hey, have you caught any fish? He was out there fishing. Why was he out there fishing? Because he had messed up. 
because he was discouraged, because he was without direction, because he didn't know what next step to take, and he was trying to distance himself from Jesus even further. He was out fishing, and so Jesus asked him, do you love me more than these? Than these? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your job? Would be a better way for, for it to be said right there. Do you love me more than your job? Or, or even more, and, and something that I'm guilty of sometimes, do you love me more than just your busy work? Do you love me more than your comfort zone? Do you love me more than the stuff that you're used to doing, the comfortable stuff in your life? Do you love me more than, you know what, you fill in the blank. You know you better than I do. You fill in the blank. Jesus is asking us, do you love me more than these? Because if you do, then stop going back to these. Every time you get discouraged, stop running back to these. Every time you you don't have direction in your life, stop running back to these, is what he's saying here. Stop running from me, is what he's saying. Stop running from me when you get discouraged. Stop running from me. Let's have a conversation. Stop your busy work. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm guilty of this. Ask my wife. Man, when I get discouraged, I don't, I don't, I don't clam up and shut down or anything. I start getting busy with anything that I can get busy with so I can try to get it out of my mind instead of going to the place that I should be going to, to have that conversation with God. Do you love me more than these? And then we get into the other verses. Now, I I wanted to make sure that we understood that verse 15, but going back, verse 15 through 17, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, full name three times. Boy, if my kids hear their full name three times, they're running at this point. Away from me, mighty fact. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep then. Now there's a lot of, there, there, there's a, a, a lot of, uh, theories on this three times. Most people say that that each one of Jesus asked him, "Do you love me?" Uh, most people will say that that's that's a, rec- a reckoning for Peter because he denied Jesus three times. So so uh, so Jesus asked him three times, and I agree with that. I do. I, I I agree with that that theory of it. But I also believe. This was Jesus getting Peter's attention. Because just like if I yell my full name of my children out three times, if I tell them something three times, is it important? Sure. Sure, and I, and I think that was the, the point that Jesus was getting to here, that, that he was trying to get to his, his attention. Uh, it, because if you're told those things three times, yeah, it's important. Uh, but even more than that, Notice that, that Jesus bring. notice what he doesn't do here. Notice what he doesn't do. In, in, in those three, do you love me? He never brings up Peter's denial. Not one time did he bring up the denial. He just asked Peter, do you love me? He didn't bring up the denial. Because you know why? Because Jesus doesn't look back at what you did. He doesn't look back at where you've been. Hey, think about this. Peter... Peter was a hothead. He, he was a hothead. He was, he was the one with no filters, right? What he said, he, he, he just straight out of his brain. No, no filter at all there. 
And not only that, so, so not only is, is Peter a hothead, Jesus never brings it up. He has no filters. Jesus never brought it up. Hey, he denied Jesus three times. Did Jesus bring that up right here? No. No. He never brought these things up. So if not the things that he had done or stuff that's in his back, what did he say? Here, now, and in the future. That's what he was telling, that's what he was telling Peter. He, he was, Peter, do you love me? Yes, God, you know that I love you. Then feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, 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 God. I, I, I love you. Good. Take care of my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, yes, God, I do love you. Then feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Here, now, and in the future. Nothing that was behind Peter. I find that fascinating in here. Uh, it, it's because, because think about it. Who keeps looking back in the rearview mirror? We do. We do. We, we, we are the ones that keep looking back. It's human nature to do that. When we've messed up, we want to keep looking back at it, not him. We want to keep looking back. And when we get discouraged, when we get discouraged, does he look back at, at what, what we're discouraged about? No, he's looking forward. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Here, now, and in the future is what God is wanting. So as we finish up this morning, think, think about that a moment. Stay out of your rear view mirror, first of all. Preached about that very thing weeks ago. Stay out of the rear view mirror. You're not going to win that game if you remember back to that. And, and, and so what is he saying? Well, imagine having that. Instead of Peter in this position, imagine us in that position. And Jesus says, do you love me? Do you love me? Because you see, this is the conversation that he's wanting to have with us. This is the conversation that he wants to have with us. Do you love me? Yes, but you don't know what I did. Really? You're going to tell God that? You don't know what I did? This is, this is Jesus' response. Yeah, I do. I know what you did. Did he bring it up? No, you did. Do you love me? That's his question. Do you love me? Yes, God, I love you. But you don't know what I did. Yeah, I do. I do. I was there. I know what you did. Yes, I do love you. And then Jesus says again, because, you know, we don't listen the first time, so we have to wait for the second time sometimes, right? So Jesus asks again, do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, God, but you weren't there. Jesus says, yeah, I was. Did he bring it up? No, you did. You brought it up. He's wanting to show you something. He's wanting to give you something. He's wanting to give you direction for the here, now, and in the future. But we want to keep, you just don't know what I did, God. You don't know where I've been, God. Yeah, I do. I was right there beside you. So we don't listen the first time, right? If you're anything like me, you don't listen the second time either. So it's that third time. So it's that third time. And that third time is the one that typically slaps me pretty hard in the face. Jesus is standing there again. Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes. Yes, God, I do love you. But how could you ever forgive me? You know what his response this time is? Yeah, I can. Why? Because I love you that much. 
That's the conversation that he's wanting to have with you. So I encourage you today, talk. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk to God about, yeah, you could talk about those things that, that, that are discouraging you. You could talk about those things that, that you messed up with. You could talk about you walking in the wrong direction. You could talk about that stuff. But, but let me encourage you to do one thing. Listen to what he has to say to you because he has he doesn't he doesn't care about that stuff that's back there he only cares about your next step where you're going from here you're you're here you're now and in your future that's what he wants you to take care of now feed my lambs take care of my sheep feed my sheep look forward look past what's behind you get out of your rearview mirror is what he's saying there do you love me? Yes, God. But how could you forgive me? Easy. I love you that much. Kind of goes back to, to one of the most famous verses in all the world, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. Take out the world and put you in there because you're part of the world. You are his world. For God so loved you that he sent his son to die on the cross. The same cross that, that, that he was at when Peter denied him three times. Could you imagine if, if, if Jesus never came back and, 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 and confronted Peter about this and if Peter stayed out on that fishing boat and if he stayed out back in his comfortable life, if he would have stayed doing that and he was there and he, and he, and he just kept doing that and, and he stayed discouraged. He, 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 he knew that he messed up, so you know what? I'm just going to stay discouraged the rest of my life. Have you ever felt that way? And then when you get to that point, you say, I just I don't have any direction right now, so you know what? I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep uh, with my comfortable space, and you're going to continue to distance yourself from God. Day after day, you're going to keep doing that. Could you imagine if Jesus never came back? to confront Peter right here. Could you imagine Peter? Th think, think, think on Peter's level right now. Every time that he got up in the morning, he heard the rooster crow. He would relive it every day. Every day he would hear that rooster crow. And every day he'd realized, I messed up. Every day he'd be discouraged. Every day he wouldn't have direction in his life. Every day he would continue to, to distance himself from Jesus. Jesus wouldn't allow it with Peter. Jesus isn't going to allow it with you. Why? Because he loves you that much. He loves you that much. As we finish up today, if you'll just bow your heads, close your eyes right where you are. Hey, today's title I wanted to keep it short and simple. Let's talk. Why did I do that? Because it's that simple. Let's talk. That's Jesus standing in front of you and he's saying, let's talk. Let's have that conversation. Let's talk about things. And I know what you're going to do this morning. If, if, if you're seriously wanting to have that conversation with God, the first thing that you're going to do is probably the first thing that I'd do if I was in the situation. God, I'm sorry for the times that I messed up. And that might be part of your healing process that you need to say, God, I messed up. God, I am so discouraged. God, I don't have direction in my life right now. God, I have spent too much time to distance myself from you. That might be part of your healing process today. Go there. Don't stay there. That's the example that, that Jesus gives us in the scripture today. Don't stay there. He knows everything. He was right there beside you when you messed up. He was there when you messed up. He knows these things. He does. He knows the distance between you and him right now. He does not care. 
he only wants to talk to you about the here, the now, the future. What's in the past is in the past. Let's leave it there. Get out of our rear view mirrors and look to him. Have that conversation with him. Talk to him. Let's be, let's be record breakers today and, and, and kick that whole 10 minute thing out of our lives. And I encourage you to don't think it of as, as prayer. I know that's the, the term that we use, but it's a conversation. It's a personal conversation. So as you're sitting there today, with your eyes closed, with your heads bowed, right there where you are, you can have that conversation with God right now. Right where you are. Just you and Him. Just you and Him. Have that talk. Maybe today you're sitting there and you you know what? Maybe you're watching online today. Maybe there's... There's that one person out there that has never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm talking to you. Let me tell you what that is. That's a conversation with God as well. That's all it is. That's a conversation with God. If I can help you with that conversation or if if Bill can help you with that conversation, don't leave today. Don't go through today without contacting us. Let us help you with that conversation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you for who you are, for what you did, Father. And Father, yes, we all mess up. Every one of us. Every one of us have messed up at one time or another. Maybe it was today. And not only that, but we all get discouraged whether it's discouragement with our with our jobs with our family with life in general and father we just feel discouraged with you father we've all been there as well every one of us and at one time or another in our lives and it might even be today father we walk without direction because we're not looking to you because we've spent so much time trying to distance ourselves from you. Because in our minds, we thank Father, that you don't know what we've done. And you're telling us, yeah, I do. But Father, you weren't there. Yes, I was. Father, thank you for that assurance in our lives that you do know that you were there. And that you want to talk about it. Why? Because you love us that much. Father, thank you for that assurance. Thank you for that in my heart, in my mind. Thank you, Father. And we ask all of us in Christ's name. Amen. If you'll please stand, let's sing a couple verses. You are the light to my
Thank y'all, and thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I'll have to agree with Tracy. Uh, I'm not, I've never been much of a talker. But uh, <laughs> and when, I was, when I first uh, started going to church, I was very quiet, and I kind of it kind of I kind of got out of it. And there's two things that I think of when I think of why I came out of it uh, and started talking and being a talker. One was that uh, practice. Of course, you got to practice if you want to be, if you're going to do what you're going to do. You say practice. Another thing is, is that I had a, a, a loving and a trusted audience, uh, at, and that was my church family, and that is y'all. And that goes along with our mission. Our mission statement is uh, the mission of Maple Springs is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Well. We want them to be saved, first and foremost. That's the most important thing. But then you want them to grow in their talents and in their gifts. Uh, you don't want them to be stagnant. You want them to be, uh, to be useful in Christ. And so that's what y'all are, and, and I praise y'all for that, and I'm thankful for that, that you are a loving and trusting audience. And you let me say stuff, and you'll laugh politely. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> uh, as far as our art mission opportunities today, uh, Ladies for Christ on Wednesday, June the 8th at Kathy Callahan's house. Dean's going to be doing the cooking. It's at 630. Uh, please bring snacks and water for hospice, okay? Uh, our monthly food pantry uh, item is canned pasta, ravioli. Uh, don't forget... The Your Choices Randolph Baby Bottle campaign. Uh, please bring your bottles back. Not after. You can do it before, but not after June the 19th, Father's Day. They need to be back June the 19th, Father's Day, okay? So make sure you'll bring those back. It's, it's a great ministry, and those baby bottles help. And I, I just pray and ask that you bring them back by June the 19th, Father's Day. We have a new monthly prayer guide. Uh, it's lovely, and it's wonderful. Uh, inside, chapow, you find a calendar. So if you need to know what's going on, booyah, there you go, right there, pow. And you can also write your, uh, what you want to pray for, prayer for us. Uh, always remember to do that and write down people who you may want to pray for health concerns, special requests, and inside is salvation needs. Uh, you can do all that. These are very good to keep so you can remember who you, who you asked to pray for or who, who's asked to pray uh, for you to pray for. Uh, as far as our prayer requests go, remember those who are not able to be with us. There's quite a few as you look around. A lot of people are on vacation, but then there's others who are sick and are not able to be with us. So uh, please remember them in your prayers. Uh, and, uh, I want to also encourage you to uh, uh, post their prayer request on uh, msbcsigrove.com slash prayer, okay? Uh, I read it because I always get msbcsigrove confused. And I don't know why, because it, it stands for, guess what? Maple Springs Baptist Church Sigrove.com. And I always struggle with that. I don't know why. It's just weird. <laughs> uh, first of all, and also, uh, uh, I want to uh, thank you for those who are giving and those who are going to give. Uh, when we talk about commitment, I was going to ask you, has anybody been content to go get gas today? Anyone at all? Anyone? You know, we're, we're not. We, we struggle. I don't know about you, but I kind of complain. Oh, man. Almost five dollars a gallon, and thinking about getting my my neighbor's donkey and riding uh, because I just can't afford gas. The thing is, is that God wants us to be content. Uh, God wants us to be content in giving, not just of our money, but of our time. And uh, he, and uh, there's been a study that says that the more generous you are, the more the more joyful you are. 
And why is that? Well, I can imagine that, that giving makes you joyful because you're helping someone else. And you're not relying on that little bundle of money you have there uh, or whatever it is, your time or whatever. Second Corinthians 9, 7, I wanted to share this with you. Each, uh, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God wants us to give joyfully, give knowing that he's going to give back and that he is the faithful one. And we can trust in him and we can rely on him to give. Uh, remember, you can give through tithely, you can give here, you can mail it in. But please remember to do so. Remember, you're doing that to help build the kingdom of God. You're doing that not for us, but for God. So remember that, your time and your money. Uh, also, I wanted to remind you that we are having church tonight, so please come. They're having youth, and they're having uh, the uh, Bible study up here, so please come. All right, again, remember those who aren't here, okay? And let's pray for those who, who weren't able to be here with us today. Let's go ahead and close in prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you and praise you, God, for everything you have done for us, God. Lord God, you are so mighty and so good. God, the God who created everything, everything, loves us. Why, God? Why would such a great and mighty God love us? Father, we fail you, God, and I know we do, and I do. But, God, I also know that we don't have to stay there in our failures, dear God. Lord, you love us, and you want to pull us out, and you want to make us better, God. You want to make us your children, God. You want to make us more like you and less like us and less like the world, dear God. Lord, Father, I just thank you and praise you, God, that you show your love in such mighty and grand ways through the shedding of your son's blood, dear God to giving us a place that is beautiful and a place that we can cut, go and live. And you've given us each other, dear God. How great is that, Lord, that we are not walking through this life alone. We are walking through this life with you, God. We are walking through this life with each other. Lord, praise you and thank you for that, dear God. Thank you for the church family, dear Lord. And thank you, God, for putting us in a family, oh, Lord. God, I pray now that you would bless those who weren't able to be with us today, God. Lord, if they're sick, I pray for healing, dear God. Lord, if they're on vacation, I pray for travel safety, God, that you help them return. Lord, knowing that we miss them. God, I pray, Lord, that those who are sick will be able to return and be with us, dear God. And Lord, Father, I pray if not, we'll reach out and love on them, dear God, as only you can. God, keep us in your will this week, God. Help us, God, that we would live for you, that we would love you and we would serve you. And, God, we would stay close, close, close to your cross, our Father. God, we thank you and praise you, God. Walk with us and keep us near you, O Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you, God, for everything you're going to do. And, God, just be with us, Lord, and help us to live for you and help us to be your light in a dark world. We love you and we praise you, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right.